I have taken apart the ball shooter from my pinball machine because I want to try to improve it. The current design has a problem that I'm going to explain with this picture here. This is the initial position where the rubber bands are pulling it this way. Um, the three balls are resting on top of it and you notice this uh, curved line here. Uh, that's a plastic strip and I'll explain its function in a moment because as you pull back this plastic strip is supposed to go back to a vertical position and what this will do as the plunger is pulled back all the way is that it will uh, act as a stop so that the balls um, pushing from the top don't push out this ball out the front and uh, this way having more than one ball in front of the ball shooter. In theory this works in practice because this plastic strip is bent all the time. It only works if you pull back really fast before the balls have enough time to fall out here. So every time a new person um, comes and tries out the pinball machine uh, they are very careful and pull back the ball shooter slowly uh, thereby giving enough time for balls to come out and they would always have two balls shooting out and then I would have to explain oh you have to pull really fast all the way and let go really fast and then it'll work and uh, eventually people get the hang of it but it's never good if you have to explain something and it's not um, usable intuitively so uh, I want to go through some designs how I'm going to try to tackle this problem. Um, the main problem for me was how do I reliably make only and exactly one ball come out when you pull back the ball shooter. My uh, first basic idea was that I have a ramp with balls and I need a mechanism like this where I have a slanted pusher that uh, makes a gap when it's down. Uh, one ball falls in there as I push it up. It acts as a stop for the following balls and uh, makes this ball fall out. So, but of course that is vertical motion. So now I need something to convert the horizontal motion from the ball shooter into vertical motion. And uh, I have just the thing there, a rod connecting the two pieces. And as this is pushed horizontally, this piece moves up vertically. That led me to a design that looks something like this. Um, here's the ball shooter, here's the vertical piece and uh, three balls in there. Uh, as the plunger goes backwards, this goes up, one ball drops down and when you let go the plunger shoots the ball. Another variation of this could be um, this one, where instead of vertical motion you have circular motion, you have a little gap in the a circle here so that one ball fits in there and as this disc here turns it pushes the ball forward and um, there's only room for one ball so the other balls uh, stay in there. and. Uh, don't fall out. I made a working prototype of both designs. Here's the first one and uh, I'll demonstrate how it works. Uh, this is the ball shooter right here and um, here's the moving part. As I push this backwards it pushes one ball out. This part at the same time acts as a stop for the other balls. The ball can drop down, land here, go back all the way and then push the ball forwards. And the same thing happens then with the subsequent balls. And as you can see, only one ball comes out at a time. Uh, a problem with this is that this completely depends on gravity to bring the ball down and in front of the plunger. So if I do this too quickly, you'll see the ball gets caught on top of the plunger and then I have the same problem as before that I have two balls in front of the plunger suddenly if I do this too quickly. So it'll work for slow pulling of the ball shooter but not for fast. This is the other design with a, a disc and uh, where horizontal motion is converted to circular motion 
And you can see here one ball has dropped into the gap in the circle and as I pull it back it takes the ball, drops it in front of the ball shooter which can then push it out. As I bring this back the next ball can drop in and I can do the same thing again. This could work. Um, my idea here was that the fact that the disc is turning downwards will help the ball to be uh, thrown in front of the ball shooter faster, like so, so that the problem with the uh, other design doesn't happen where if you pull too fast the ball uh, ends up landing on top of this. Um, but if you do it fast enough this can still happen and um, so it's it's not entirely reliable here you see that so if I do this very fast it can still happen so I went back to the drawing board I went through some designs and I'm not going to go through each one of them um, I tried different ideas uh, this was one of the more promising ones um, it's basically a variation of my initial design it's just that instead of vertically the balls are coming in uh, on a slant here and um, then there's this lever here that is supposed to come down and separate the first ball from the others or act as a stop for the rest of them so that exactly only one ball can drop down um, I think it'll work uh, it's just that I didn't find a very elegant solution to make sure that this this lever here um, can be can be pushed down or pulled down uh, as you pull the ball shooter back and put back into its initial position when you <clears throat> bring the ball shooter back to its uh, starting position. Um, so I might come back to this but um, I tried some other ideas first and um, after a lot of thinking um, I came to this this is the design um, that I'm going to settle for and make a working prototype of as you can tell it's a variation of uh, the first design I came up with with this vertical pusher here and um, the main idea behind it is that I want to make sure that the ball as it drops can never drop on top of the ball shooter. The way I solve this is by saying alright the ball shooter needs to start here that needs to be the initial position of it. You can see it extends further but ignore that for now. So if the ball shooter starts here and is pulled backwards from there then there's no way the ball can land on top of it. It will always be in front of it no matter how fast or slow you pull it. I still need something though to attach this rod to so that I can have this uh, conversion of horizontal to vertical motion. So if this is the side view this would be the top view and you can see this is the part where the rod attaches and this is the ball shooter right here and there's a gap here so these are just narrow uh, strips or sides and the ball will drop in the middle and um, the ball shooter can then push it when it's resting right in here. So that's the basic variation there and uh, this is uh, a two scale a drawing um, each square is uh, half a centimeter by half a centimeter so I'm hoping that uh, this will make for a very reliable ball shooter that will shoot exactly one ball no matter how fast or slow you push it <laughs>